So in this video, I wanted to talk about the other jotters. And what I mean by that is the Parker Jotter Rollerball and the Parker Jotter Fountain Pen. When people talk about the Parker Jotter, I would say like maybe 99, maybe 99, maybe 90 times out of 100, you're talking about the ballpoint. It's a very popular ballpoint. Usually people like it in the stainless steel version, but there are other versions. And again, it's really nice. It's affordable, maybe 10, 12 bucks. Has a great build, nice click, lasts forever. So the ballpoint jotter is really the jotter. Uh, once in a while, my, people might be talking about the Parker Jotter mechanical pencil. You see that one come up once in a while. It's an okay mechanical pencil, has some issues, uh, but it's pretty nice and it is a really nice matching piece to the stainless steel jotter. And then there are some jotter ballpoint variants, like this one was sold as a gel, has some black lower. It's, uh, it's cool, right? But the forgotten jotters, at least in my mind, are these two. So I wanted to pick them up and Parker had recently done a very big sale. So they were very affordable. I think they would normally go for maybe about $12 for the rollerball and maybe $25 for the fountain pen, give or take, just a ballpark. Uh, but I picked them up for less than that and been using them for a little bit and I kind of wanted to talk through them. I bought the rollerball in the blue lower. So it's plastic instead of all stainless steel, just because I thought this blue looked very cool. Usually I would only buy a stainless steel jotter, but once in a while uh, I like the color, so I'll pick this one up. So again, this is the rollerball version of the jotter. You can see Parker logo, uh, made in France. This is a very new one. I, again, I just bought it retail uh, a couple months ago. Stainless steel upper, the arrow with the fletchlings and all that. You can see that sort of design is the newest design kind of a domed stainless steel top. It is a cap piece, it's not one piece. And the plastic lower, it is also sold with different lowers, but if you want the blue or any of the really vibrant colors, you gotta get the plastic. Snap on, snap off cap, you probably would expect. And then you see the refill. There is just this like kind of stylized metal around here. That's the lower of the grip section plastic grip section and then plastic body and sort of uh, a little step there. It's definitely not seamless. The pencil, oh, sorry, the pen opens up just by unscrewing. The body is very light and very flimsy. Actually feels like it's kind of made out of a cheap plastic. And again, while I like the color, I'm sort of regretting buying it in the plastic. And there's no metal and reinforcing or anything like that in there at all. So you wanna make sure you don't over tighten that. The lower is all plastic except for those little rings. Again, those are just for uh, style purposes. I think it's, you know, pretty nice and Parker has used rings and wedding ring type designs in the past. So maybe it's a historic callback. I'm not really sure. And then this is all plastic, kind of flimsy feeling. It does not in any way feel particularly reassuring. And then there's the refill. The rollerball uses obviously a uh, kind of weird looking refill. It's not a standard G2 style refill. It's uh, this Parker pr proprietary design made in France. 0.5 millimeter is the one that comes with it. It's this kind of stainless steel body. It's two pieces, which is a little odd. Uh, then a spacer back here. And then kind of the extended tip area. You can see this area, this piece right here is meant specifically to be used by the jotter. And some of it is kind of exposed there. So it's kind of like these things go part and parcel, which I guess you probably, it's not like you'd want to use this refill in another pen. It's not so good that you're like, oh man, I'm dying to use my Parker Jotter rollerball refill in my whatever body. So uh, it's kind of just, this is the refill for the Jotter and that's kind of it. And uh, yeah, it all fits together fine. I'd say build quality is okay. So combine okay build quality with a weird refill and I think you're starting to suspect why the Jotter rollerball is not as popular as the Jotter ballpoint or even the mechanical pencil. It has an okay snap, but it is quite new. So over time that'll degrade and uh, I don't foresee any issues, but uh, probably not something that's really gonna hold up that well. Whereas, you know, with the standard Jotter, it's all stainless, 
that click is always gonna last and these things last for you know 40 50 years at this point point. and now the rollerball sorry the fountain pen the fountain pen i bought in the full stainless but with the gold usually it's sold stainless with silver uh it was a little cheaper to be honest with the gold like a buck or two so i bought it with the gold i think it looks okay i'm not a big fan of matching silver and gold but you know it's snazzy enough and uh don't have any serious issues with it the gold does look a little cheap obviously it's not real gold it's just uh you know bronze it's not bronze it's like uh you know gold plated it's probably not even gold it's gold colored but it, it does look a little cheap in person clearly it's not gold when you're looking at it you you, you know you don't even know have to know it's a ten ten dollar pen i guess i'm saying and you would say like eh, yeah that looks a little off to me but uh, not a big deal anyway we still have that sort of molded finial piece there and that's just probably just epoxied on i'm not really sure uh, instead of doing one piece they do the two and then they slam the cap sorry the clip clip in there just probably to save cost also parker logo this one should also be made in france that's right and then this one has the stainless steel body which again i vastly prefer to the plastic so i learned my lesson there snap on snap off cap and then we see almost the same section below, probably actually the same section below, the same kind of three ring design. And then we have a stainless steel nib. It's a little bit longer than the roller wall front piece, but not much. So it's a relatively modest nib. It's uh, heavily curved. So it wraps around about 50%. Uh, so it's like a 180 degree nib all stainless steel has sort of those chevrons there which are you know inspired probably by the uh the feathers of the arrow which is pretty cool no breather hole just kind of the slit there very simple black plastic feed you see below opening the pen up this is definitely a nicer piece much much more reassuring than the plastic and then opening the pen up, you see it's all plastic. And then we have a, uh, I believe this is a Parker user proprietary refill. Uh, and it's the size of a standard international long refill. I do not believe an international long will work. And that is the Jotter fountain pen and rollerball. On the whole, I would say I am not blown away with these. The build quality on both is fine. Like in this one, it's maybe not in keeping with the ballpoint, but it's good enough. If the plastic is what you get, then I think you are missing out on the full jotter experience. Again, I, I consciously chose it, so it's on me, but uh, I do regret that. I would definitely say get the full stainless. It's a nicer pen, a nicer weight to it. It's not like the plastic was reinforced to compensate in the for the fact that plastic is lighter and less strong than steel. It's like the plastic is a worse product good click everything stays together it's like even this stainless on stainless the tolerances you could feel it but it's pretty good it's better than it needs to be so i think that's okay especially for the price of the pen and there's almost no wiggle there maybe a bit but relatively none and the cap is not in any way loose which i like with the rollerball i've noticed that as you put it back on it will catch sometimes if you don't put it on exactly straight it'll catch which is to me super annoying i like if you are going to design a pen with a squared off edge here you need to have a rounded piece on the inside to compensate for that you can't have a squared off piece here and a squared off piece here because this happens and as you're putting your cap back it's just an annoying feeling uh so I don't understand how you could have a pen that's been released for 50 years and have weird issues like that. Uh, but maybe the rollerball is newer, I'm not exactly sure. I will say that the two caps have little breather holes there. And I think that's just to present, prevent any sort of suction from forming as you're pushing it down or pulling it out. Uh, if there's a little bit of breathing there, then uh, that won't happen. And the suction is particularly bad with a fountain pen as when you, not really when you push it in, but when you pull it out, you could if there's suction, you could draw out some ink and start collecting ink inside 
the cap or around the nib and it just gets to be pretty messy and gross. That's why uh, that hole, I'm guessing, is there. And you can see it right there. As far as the writing experience goes, uh, neither of these are, I would say, stellar pens. They're, they're definitely in a good enough category. I prefer the fountain pen to the rollerball. So this is the Parker Jotter Roller Ball in the 0.5 millimeter Parker refill. And it's just an okay rider. No complaints with it. It definitely feels a little scratchy. Uh, it's not like a smooth fountain pen type roller ball. It's just an everyday, normal, boring roller ball, sort of like a cross, just, you know, gets the job done, but nothing uh, really nice to it. And actually it's a little too scratchy for me. I'm using this on a cheaper paper, which sort of exacerbates it, but I do not enjoy writing with this pen, but it does get the job done. And this was in the 0.5 millimeter. I'm not sure if it's sold in other sizes. This is, when I bought it, the only size that was available. So maybe if you bought an aftermarket refill from Parker, it would have a larger size and you get it up to like a one, not all millimeter or 0.7, but this is all I could find. So this is what I'm basing my experience on. Definitely as a lefty, it's scratchy. And while the, it's a nice black Parker, it does, I like Parker's inks. It just does not feel very nice to me, but it works, no problems. And it's doing well on this cheaper paper. The Parker Jotter fountain pen for a $20 fountain pen is actually not that bad. I would say I enjoy writing this pen as much as I like the Pilot Metropolitan, which is actually a little cheaper or the Pilot Kakuno, which is again, a little bit cheaper. And the nib is very stiff. It obviously no, uh, it's not a nib you would ever flex. And it was also, I would say awkwardly tiny. It just looks really too small. I'm fine with a small nib on an inexpensive pen, but this one is, it's like really quite tiny, but it's a nice writer. Very little, if any, sorry, line variation. So you're really not getting much of a fountain pen experience. Even if you put some force on it, you're not getting much line variation, maybe a little, but at that point you're, you're giving it so much force that you're not even using it like a pen. You're just using like expelling ink as hard as you can, or like not as hard as you can, but you're just like, if you're seeing line variation is more that you're just trying to do it. But I will say it's a quick writer. It's good on most papers. Uh, it's not very smooth. It, it's not bad. It's not scratchy like the rollerball. It just has a little feedback, which I actually like. It has a sort of that platinum type feedback or maybe a, you know, a fine pilot, which is, uh, is A-OK -okay with me. And as in the size, which they don't even say the size here. I think it's just, I don't know. I guess it, it says medium here, but when I bought it, it, didn't, it wasn't sold as a medium. It was just sold as the Parker Jotter fountain pen. So I'm not sure if it comes in extra fine or fine or anything like that, but in the medium, it's uh, it's somewhere between a medium and a fine, maybe a heavy fine, a light medium, uh, which is A-OK -okay with me. And it's uh, writing nicely, keeps up nicely. I like Parker's ink. You know, as much as I'm not a huge fan of these Jotter pens, the uh, Parker Quick Ink is always a very reliable option to me. This pen, I'll just know it does have the same cap issue where you don't put it on perfectly square, it will lock up. Uh, I would say a good comparison for the Parker Jotter fountain pen would be the Pilot Explorer. It's a larger pen, obviously, but the Pilot is all plastic. So it's a big trade-off whether you want a smaller metal pen or a larger plastic pen. Uh, this one also has a larger nib, but the nib to me is a, single, a similar writer. This one is Pilot's medium, which is more like a, uh, I would say a European fine or American fine. And uh, probably a, you know, a nice writer, again, smooth-ish, but not really like fountain pen smooth, just smooth enough. And this one's nice and reliable. Uh, this one has more of a fountain pen type feel to me, larger nib, larger body, and all that. Uh, but it's an interesting comparison because they're right in the same price range. Between the two, 
Uh, I would tend to go with the pilot because I have a lot of pilot refills around and I have pilot converters, but I would say it's really a toss up and I don't think the pilot is necessarily much of a better writer than the uh, jotter if you are focused on note taking. If you really want more of a fountain pen type experience, then I think pilot is giving you more of a fountain pen. If what you want to do is just do some writing, do some note taking, you want to do with a fountain pen, then the jotter is uh, definitely going to get the job done. So those are the other jotters. Uh, I would say skip the rollerball. You're probably glad to know it exists. And that is probably enough if you ask me. As for the fountain pen, I think it's an interesting option. Uh, if you could find a deal and get it for around $20, I would not spend more than that on it. There's so many good options. And you definitely don't want to buy this instead of buying a Twisby Eco or uh, you know something in that price category. Even, even Explorer has me questioning whether I would get the jotter. But if you want an all metal pen, it gets the job done. And it's a reliable writer. It's just that you're not getting too much special fountain pen type writing out of it. It's just like you're writing with a fountain pen with some good Parker ink. And you have a jotter that matches your jotter, which is pretty cool. So those are the other jotters. Thanks for watching.